What's up, YouTube? This is Around the Neighborhood Movie Nerd, back to give you guys everything that is going on in the world of movies and TV. So if you know me, you know that I am not the biggest fan of romance in the movie. I think that it's very cliched, sometimes even more cliched than horror, and I'm just not the most romantic person in general, so I find that rom-coms don't really appeal to me in any way. But every once in a while, there's that one special little gem that comes along and really, like, just tugs on my heartstrings to the point of ripping it right out of my chest. And we got another one of those little gems right here, and it is in the form of The Big Sick, which is a small independent movie that came out at the end of June. It starred Kumail Nanjiani and was from Silicon Valley, and it was written by him and his wife, Emily B. Gordon, and now I am here to review it. So this is my review for The Big Sick. That's why they call it love. Really good I thought I could just start saying something and something small would come out. The Big Sick is directed by Wet Hot American Summer's Mike Showalter and is co-written and stars Silicon Valley's Kumail Nanjiani as a fictionalized version of himself who hooks up with Emily, a non-Muslim girl who attends one of his stand-up shows and then ends up getting him as her Uber driver. However, cultural differences as well as attachments to his traditional Muslim family causes them to break up, but when Emily gets sick and has to be put into a medically induced coma, Kumail finds himself at a crossroads as he grows closer and closer as well as gets to know her parents, played by Ray Romano and Holly Hunter. So as I got to know this guy Kumail Nanjiani through Mike Judge's hit comedy TV series Silicon Valley, he was fantastic from the get-go and at first I only thought it was because of his back and forth with Martin Starr and I thought that he was only going to be good in that kind of a setting but as the seasons went on I really ended up finding him more and more endearing and then I hear that he co-wrote this tiny indie movie with his wife about how they met and I saw it and oh man this movie is fantastic. So not only is Kumail a fantastic comedian actor but he's apparently got some serious writing abilities and some serious dramatic range here because this movie takes so many unexpected twists and turns that every single time you think it's going to go in one direction, it undercuts and takes a path you didn't even know existed and Kumail nails it every single step of the way, both from a writing standpoint and an acting standpoint. So, to give you an example, with the stuff concerning his family, you assume it's going to go one way because in all of these types of media, whenever there's a Muslim family and they find out that the main character is doing something, you know, white that's not really on the Muslim tradition, you know there's going to be some kind of tension that ends up getting resolved in the end, but here, no, they straight up disown him, but rather than just take it, he straight up tells them, no, this is not happening, and you don't get to kick me out of the family just because I decided to do something differently with my life. Like, Kumail does that brilliantly here. But besides Kumail, the rest of the cast is spectacular. Zoe Kazan plays the girl, Emily, who is a representation of his wife, Emily B. Gordon, and their chemistry on screen is so good, they may as well be married in real life. But then, after the relationship is well established, and you're waiting for the thing that's going to come along and throw it all into chaos, it still comes from a place that you least expect it, and then, once she finally falls into the coma, and Kumail meets her parents. Oh man, Ray Romano and Holly Hunter might be the best set of parents I've seen on film and TV in a very long time. Ray reminded me last year with Vinyl that he could actually act and he does it again here. These two both give Oscar-worthy performances. They are both so funny, so charming, so endearing. They're both so atypical for, um, you know, the, the girls traditionally white parents and it really makes them like two of the best characters and performances that I've seen so far this year. Now, a non-existent criticism of this movie that I'm bringing up just to play devil's advocate could be that because Kumail is writing about himself and his own relationship that he kind of has an easier job making this great, but I'm going to undercut that by saying that that's the same bullshit excuse that could be applied to Master of None as he's Ansari's vehicle on Netflix, which is just as equally great. There were also a lot of elements of Master of None in this movie. I'm not trying to, like, compare them. I'm just saying that I found a lot of similarities with them. But overall, The Big Sick is it's just a great little film to watch if you're on the move for some great writing, some fantastic performances, and a movie that's going to have you feeling that perfect little mixture between sad and happy that makes everyone just feel like a little bit better afterwards. This movie gets 9 out of 10 stars from me. So that's it. That is my review for The Big Sick. Be sure to click the like button and the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at Movie Nerd Review. Also head on over to the website, MovieNerdReviews.com. Also be sure to leave a comment below. And that's it. I will see you guys next time. Go!